<laughs> this game was bad. This game was absolutely trash. I don't care what happened late in that ball game. All that exciting stuff with Vince Flask as Roman Quinn on the mound. You lost to the Chicago White Sox. Okay, you lost in 15 innings to the Chicago White Sox by a score of four to three. And one of the funny things is I forgot Jason Vargas was on the mound today. That's how long this game took. Major fact, major keys in losing this ball game. Our four, five, six guys went one for 19. That's Bryce Harper, JT, and Scott Kingery. One for 19 combined. We had three chances with the bases loaded, and we couldn't score in any of those. First, seventh in the eighth inning, bases loaded, couldn't score. Gabe Kapper with a ton of questionable decision makings during the extra innings, a lot of substitutional changes, and questionable decisions with the pitchers on the mound, especially late in this ballgame, which I will get into later. This was probably one of the worst managed games in Gabe Kapper's career, and definitely the worst of the season, but probably one of the worst of his career. But we'll get into that later. So Jason Vargas was on the mound for us today. He, he pitched pretty solid. I'll give him that. He pitched pretty solid for us. Gave us a position to win. Goes six and a third innings. Allows five hits, two earned runs. Walks one, five strikeouts. Pretty, pretty solid performance right there. I'll give that to Jason Vargas. But the main problem for me, the offense. The offense was just terrible. The offense was terrible. It's just... Around the board today, we couldn't score. Like I said, with those bases loaded opportunities, we just could not score. And from that ball game we had yesterday afternoon against the Giants, when we scored 10 runs, JT Romuto almost getting the first cycle, and then you come into today's ball game and you give us that type of effort? That's, that's terrible. That's terrible. And you're in a playoff race at this point, and you're not bringing your best effort out against one of the wor wor worst teams in baseball. Like, seriously. And that'll also factor in into the Gabe Kapler decision-making, like with the playoff race. I'll get into that later. So the White Sox do get on the board first. Jose Abreu gets a two-run shot, makes a 2 nothing White Sox. But then Roman Quinn himself, the next half inning, hits a bomb into the second deck in right field. It's just, where, is, where, where are we seeing this power from Roman Quinn? And he had himself a ball game today. He went three for five. And Roman Quinn was our best player throughout the entire night. He was the only one providing any type of offense. And then we do, in the bottom of the six, we do tie this ball game. Bryce Harper gets a force out, and it scores a run off that play to make it 2-2. Two two. Bottom of the seventh inning, Gene Segura manages to get a single, which scores Roman Quinn, and we make it 3-2 three to two, three to two Phillies at this point. Then we go to the top of the ninth inning, when we have a chance to win this ball game. So... Juan Nicasio is on the mound. He gets the first two outs, but he does get some runners on base. We bring in Jose Alvarez. We do manage to almost get the last out of this ball game to Michael Franco. He makes a nice play, but he decides to run the third base where the guy is trying to get the third, and he misses the tag, and the guy was safe by a mile. Why isn't he taking the chance to throw the first on that play? Why isn't he taking the chance to... To basically get an easy out first. I know if the guy was maybe would have been safe at first, but it would have been a better opportunity than trying to win a race going to third base because Franco was probably like maybe like five, seven, ten feet away from third. He wasn't gonna make that. So we're stuck with a runner on third and a runner on first with two outs and Jose Alvarez on the mound, and he allows the tying run. Matt Skull singles and it's a tie ball game at three. So we go to extra innings, and between both sides, no one can really seem to get a hit. I think there was a stretch of 24 consecutive batters who did not record a hit. And it's just, we they, they do get some runners eventually, a couple walks here and there, but they can't manage to get that big hit to drive in a run. Both teams, actually, the White Sox and the Phillies. But didn't we get to the bottom, and well, before we get to the bottom of the 13th inning, actually, we do bring some bullpen guys. Parker comes in, pitch, gives us a nice solid two innings, strikes out four. And Zach Eflin. Uh, we'll get into Zach Eflin. He goes two innings, strikes out two. He was pretty solid out of the bullpen. Probably should have gone longer in this ball game, so we'll discuss that right now. Bottom of the 13th inning, Roman Quinn gets on with a single. Zach Eflin up to the plate, and he tries to bunt to get Quinn over. So the bunt was a, was pretty hard, and they managed to get Roman Quinn out at second. So, but also Zach Eflin does manage to hustle down the line and get the first base. So we have a runner on for Gene Segura, who then walks. So Gabe Kalper decides to come out, take Zach Eflin out of this ball game, pinch runs for him, 
puts Vince Velasquez out there to pinch run. I get Vince Velasquez is a insane athlete, and he's probably one of our better runners out of the pitching staff, but the decision-making right there, we have two outs in the bottom of the 13th inning. You have Reese Hoskins at the plate. What if you hit the ball into the gap? Zach Eflin could have scored on that, but that's not the major problem with that. Still, even though Reese Hoskins popped out on that, the major problem with that is it was with two outs, and the next inning, if you took Zach Eflin out of this ballgame, you're basically relying on a position player to go out on the mound the next couple in it, the next inning. You were basically reply, reply, relying on, not replying, you were basically relying on a position player to go out there and pitch. In a playoff race, in a playoff run, you're relying on a position player to go out there and pitch. And even before this ball game, we had Gabe Kapler even stated that Suarez was not available for this ball game. He was not going to be an option whatsoever. And I understand you can't predict going into extra innings. But, and also in the post game press conference, Gabe Kapler was talking about Zach Eflin saying that he had a sore tricep and he didn't want to, he didn't want to make the in. He didn't want to make anything worse for Zach Eflin, but Zach Eflin apparently wasn't complaining about, I can't go back out there, or I can't run the home plate if there's a base hit on the on the play. He wasn't complaining about anything. Just, what is the, the decision-making right there from Gabe Kapler? What is the decision-making? Just, you're taking out a pitcher who can give you multiple innings. He already went two. He could have given you three, another third inning. He probably, probably could have given you a fourth inning. But... You decide to take him out of the ball game and bring in Roman, well, the, for the pinch runner, actually. We get out of that inning without a run. And you bring in Roman Quinn for the ninth inning because you have to rely on the position player. Because you have no one else in the bullpen. Because we already use guys like Nick Pavetta, Mike Morin, Nicasio, Alvarez, Parker. And we already used Eflin. Suarez apparently was not available. So we had to rely on the position player. That was Roman Quinn. And we also put Vince Velasquez out in left field. So apparently this guy can do everything. So, Warman Quinn gets a couple outs, allows a couple runners, and the White Sox do almost manage to score a run. It's a base hit to Vince Velasquez. The runner's trying to score from second base. And Vince Velasquez plays it very very nice, actually, and he guns at the guy at home. And everyone's going crazy. Twitter's going crazy. MLB Twitter's going crazy. The fans in the ballpark are going absolutely crazy. And, yeah, it's a nice play by Vince Velasquez. He made a really nice play. He did what an outfielder was supposed to do, field the ball, field the ground ball the right way, and just gun the guy out at home. It actually wasn't a gunner. It bounced one time, but it was a perfect throw to get the guy out at home. So, yeah, he steals a run away from the White Sox, and it's still 3-3 going into the 15th inning. Well, the bottom of the 14th inning at this point. So, yeah, we after that inning, we don't manage to score any runs, and we go to the top of the 15th, and this is when the White Sox score the final run of the ball game. And it does take an umpire review. It is a single to Vince Velasquez once again. He tries to gun out the guy at home once again. It's very close. So Vince Velasquez almost got two infield assists, outfield assists actually. But it was safe on the it was safe on the original call, and it did take an umpire review just to confirm that the guy was safe. And yes, he was safe because on the replay, it, JT just barely missed him. But the White Sox make it four to three, and we go to the bottom of the fifteenth inning. You can't do anything. So. Our offense was absolutely terrible in this ballgame. Gabe Kapler and his decision-making. I just don't get it. Why are we taking Zach Eflin out of this ballgame? Just why? Why are you taking that risk? I can, like, if there was zero outs in that inning, I would understand taking Zach Eflin out of that ballgame for a pinch runner. I would completely understand that if there were zero outs. But there was two outs. And there was a 50-50 chance you were going to score the run or there was going to be another out in that inning. So you took the other you took the other side of the argument. He decided to go with the pinch runner and hoped that Reese Hoskins would have drove in the runner, but he didn't. And now he had to go out there relying on a position player, which was Roman Quinn. And he pitched decent, but he allowed the winning run. It's just what is the decision making? It's dumb. It's absolutely dumb. And I don't get it. Zach Eflin could have given you another third inning. He could have given you a fourth inning if possible. It's just. You're in a playoff race, and you're going to go out there relying on a position player to pitch. It just doesn't make sense. And we have so many injuries regardless with our pitching staff. But it just didn't make sense. Zach Eflin was not complaining that he couldn't go back out there. Yeah, he, he did say that he had soreness, but he wasn't complaining. He said 
He was saying, I'm sore, but I can still go out there and pitch. He wasn't saying I couldn't run. A tricep's not going to affect your running. He could have scored easily if Reese Hoskins hit a nice little single or ga gapper. He could have scored easily. I don't understand the point of bringing in Vince Velasquez. I just don't. You wasted your opportunity of letting Zach Effling stay out there and pitch. And you lost this ball game with that decision. But also, the offense lost this ball game because the offense couldn't do anything regardless. Bryce Harper, JT, Scott Kingery, 1 for 19. That's not going to win you ball games. Leaving the bases loaded three times. That's not going to win you ball games. You're in a playoff race. And now we fall one game behind the Washington Nationals and the Chicago Cubs for both wildcard spots. We're a game behind the Nationals in the second place for the division. And we lost an opportunity to win a ball game. Because we had it in our hands in the ninth inning and we lost it. And then we also lost it in extra innings with that dumb decision making. So, yeah, this ball game sucked. It sucked a lot. So, don't forget to leave a comment, don't forget to drop a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, boys, and I will see you in the next video. We got a game tomorrow, hopefully we can win this ball game. Because this series, we need to win two. I'll be pissed if we lose this series to the White Sox. I'll be pissed.